Five ways to take any boring, bland chord progression and make it jazzy, make it spicy, make it interesting. In increasing levels of complexity, so number one is gonna be the easiest thing you can do, all the way to number five where we start getting super fancy with it. And make sure you stick around for number four and five because not only are they my personal favorite, but we can hear them in all the classics. If you're new to the channel, what up, though? My name is Bruce Beats, and I help music producers play piano specifically for music production, not to necessarily become virtuosos, <laughs> but to be able to take what's in here and put it on here effortlessly for the exact music that you want to make. And hopefully, that's what I can help you do in this video. So let's start off with technique number uno, and that is adding colors to your chord progression. Again, we're starting off really, really basic here. And this is the easiest thing you can do to take a bland chord progression and start bringing some more life into it, some more jazzy vibes. So let's take this very simple chord progression of like F major, G, A minor. We can even add a C at the end, right? Man, we've heard this, how many times have you heard this freaking chord progression? Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It never gets old. It's beautiful. But like, you know, if I'm trying to make something soulful, like that's not really getting the job done. So the first thing I could do is instead of playing just F, G, A minor, I can start adding the colors here. So instead of playing just regular F major, maybe I can play F major seven or F major nine. Already, this chord versus this chord Sounds much more interesting. So the second chord, instead of just G major, maybe I can play G sus. Ooh, that sounds nice. So instead of playing third here, I'm playing the fourth. That sounds nice. Maybe I can play the seven. Hey, play the nine. Ooh, now I'm starting to get some really nice vibes right here instead of just regular, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sounds a little cooler. And then with the A minor here, Instead of just playing straight A minor, maybe I can play like A minor 11 with a nine. Ooh, get a little more saucy. So we go from this, which sounds nice, there's nothing wrong with that at all, to maybe something like, higher register of the piano. You see what I mean? Just by adding the colors, not changing anything else with the chord progression, we can already start to get some more jazzy vibes. Level number two would be to add some passing chords. Now there's a lot of different things we can do with passing chords, so I'll just throw a couple here that I feel would be appropriate. If you'd like to see more videos on passing chords, definitely check out some of the other videos on this channel. But really what we wanna do is when we think about passing chords, we wanna think of what chords we can stick in between that are gonna bring us in to the next chord. That's what makes a passing chord cool. It's not the chord itself, it's actually where it's going. So how it's bringing us into that G7, how it's bringing us into that A minor, how it's bringing us into this F. That's what makes the chord cool. So first thing that's coming to mind here is having an E7 going into that A minor. So if A minor is here, here's my five chord. That's gonna bring me back. I could just stick it in there and it would work. Right? Or maybe I can make the progression longer. Now another chord I can stick in here is an F sharp, half diminished seven, that's gonna bring me into that G7. So, that sounds really nice. And so we get some extra movement there. Just by adding those chords, I took this F, G, and A minor and made it infinitely more interesting. Real quick, I just wanna mention something as I'm editing this video here. If you don't necessarily know what E7 is, or if you don't know what F sharp half diminished seven and why that works there, that's okay. That exact why is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. Creating an F sharp half diminished seven chord is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. But what you can do is every time you come across that sequence, you know now that you can use this chord. And so what I would highly recommend you do 
you if you're you know a beginner if you're a low intermediate and you're kind of struggling understanding this concept don't let that stop you from taking the chord and starting to use it and play around with it like literally slow down the visualizer pause the video rewind like you have all the answers right here in front of you in this video I wish I learned like this it would have been so much easier for me if you don't completely understand it you will get a much more solid understanding by actually doing it and sitting down on the piano playing messing up trying your best and applying the information rather than just watching me and hoping it sticks now just for kicks let's go ahead and add the C at the end of this progression so that we have this and then we have which we hear a lot. Let's throw a passing chord into that C. So first thing that comes to mind here is having a G over B into C. So I can play a G major chord, put this over B, and bring that right into C, right? So and then now we get this. Sounds beautiful. Now I wanna be clear about something. This video specifically is not necessarily going deep into the science of passing chords and how to choose them. You can actually go on the other videos and check that out. I just wanna show you that this would be level two on how to take something that's bland and make it a little bit more spicy. And these are actually things that I talk about in depth in my free group, if you wanna check it out, it's the Piano for Producers Squad. Link in the description. You could join absolutely for free. You have direct access to me where we go over sexy stuff like this all the time. And you can network and collab with all the producers that are in here from around the world as well. Really, really great place to be. Go ahead and check that out in the link in the description. Level number three is using modal harmony. Now I know I want to say modal harmony. People get really confused here and they're like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. All these modes, they got me confused. I, don't, I have no idea what it is. It's very simple. The way we use modes in modern popular music is simply by taking the same chord quality and bringing it through different keys. So playing a bunch of major seven chords or playing a bunch of minor 11 chords. That's how we use modes in a modern popular way that's really beautiful for neo soul, for R&B, and for jazzy vibes. Yo, if I took a shot for every time I said jazzy vibes. So let's use major seven chords as an example. If you don't know the triangle, it's kind of shorthand for major. It's faster to write a triangle than it is to write M-A-J. That's how I choose to denote major. So we have E major seven, C major seven, A major seven, F major seven or nine, right? Beautiful. You see how that just gives a vibe? Now, I'm not necessarily choosing these at complete random, so I want to go into the numbers and into the why I chose these specific notes so you can start to take some of these techniques and use them if you like this sound of modal harmony. So if you know me, you know I'm a big fan of thinking about music in numbers because it really helps us take sounds that we like and bring them into different keys so we're not always stuck playing in the key of C major or having to use that transpose button. So how I'm thinking about this is kind of in the key of E major. So I have a one, I have a flat six, I have a four, and I have a flat two. Now, if you're thinking, what the heck does that mean? Let me simplify this for you because this flat six and this flat two, it's actually super easy. People just like to make it complicated for whatever reason. So if I'm thinking in the key of E major, here's my E major scale. Now, instead of thinking about E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, so on and so forth, I'm actually thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then when I think about what whatever I'm gonna flat or whatever I'm gonna sharp, I can just find that note and move it. It's very simple. So if I'm playing the one chord, as we can see, obviously, that's gonna be E major, okay? Very easy. Now, when I'm thinking about the flat six, what the heck does that mean? Well, first, let me just find the sixth note. One, two, three, four, five, six, C sharp. And all I'm gonna do is flat it, which means bring it down a half step. I get C. We can see it there, it says C, so I'll just play C major seven. You see how simple that is? Like C is the flat six, because all I did was find the six, flat it, and then I played a major seven chord. Like, it's, it's that simple, dude. So then we go to the four, so same thing. One, two, three, four, A, play major seven. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So we have the one chord, the flat six chord, the four chord, 
and then we have the flat two. So we're gonna use the same process here for the flat two. So I'm in the key of E major, I'll find my two, one, two, flat it, F, <laughs> F major seven. You see how simple that is? It's, it's a two-step process. Find the two, one, two, flat it. There you go, F, that's the flat two. A quick hack for the flat two actually that I really like, it's just a half step up from your root. So if I'm here in E major, if I just go a half step up, that's my flat two. I don't even have to climb up to the two and then, and then go down. I can literally just say, okay, just go a half step up, that's my flat two. So if I'm in the key of C, okay, if I just go a half step up, D flat, that's my flat two. You see how simple that is? It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. If you're digging this, I actually have a free masterclass inside my free group. Go ahead and register for the free group and you can watch the class. It's gonna demystify all this stuff that you thought was complicated. It's gonna make it very simple, easy, and actionable for you. Number four is chromatic bass motion. If there was something that I overuse in music, it's chromatic bass motion. So what does that mean, chromatic bass motion? Well, that simply means if I'm starting with a bass note, the chromatic scale is literally just all the notes in order, whether you're going down or you're going up. So if the bass just moves down or up sequentially like that in half steps, that's chromatic bass motion. And when you can find some chords that work really well on that, oh, oh. So here's an example of how I used it recently when I reharmed Usher's nice and slow. Forgive my singing, but we have And then here I broke the pattern and I went somewhere else. But as you can see, like the bass is going F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C. And I just put chords to that. So F minor 11, E major 7, E flat sus, D minor 11, D flat major 7, C minor. Like that just sounds really cool, just going down there and it sounds very lush and it kind of gives you this modal kind of sound because it's like one chord just like melts into the next one. That's what I really like about chromatic motion, I think, especially when you're going down, is like it just has this melting quality. One chord just kind of falls into the next one. And just a quick tip on how I chose these chord qualities in particular, I was restricted by the melody, right? Seven o'clock on a dot, when my drop top goes in the streets. So I had to make sure that all of those notes fit within the chord. It's seven o'clock on the dot. This next chord, it has to fit these two notes. I'm in my drop top, cruising the streets. Right? So I just have to make sure that the melody notes and the chords match. We're getting to level three, we're getting to level four, we're getting to level five, we're getting a little bit more fancy here. So if you're a beginner and that explanation of what I just said is going like whoop, that's okay. Reharmonizing something is a more advanced skill set. So I wouldn't expect you to completely understand it, even if I broke it down for the next 45 minutes, because it does take some prerequisite knowledge. However, if you like this chord progression, nothing is stopping you from taking this, slowing down the video, trying to pluck out some of these chords, because as you start to do it, little by little, these voicings, these chords, these sounds are gonna get into your ear, they're gonna get into your muscle memory, and then they're gonna start coming out when you write. So even if you don't completely understand it, go ahead and try it. Start plucking away at it. Use it in your production. Nothing is stopping you from just stealing whatever you're hearing and using it, because that's the way you learn. And last but not least, the inside two five. Before I explain this, let me give you two examples of how this sounds. Here we go. Sounds nice, right? Here's another one. See how that had like a certain motion to it? So what exactly is going on here? One of the most quintessential chord progressions ever is the two, five, one. So let's talk about this in the key of C major. If I'm in the key of C major, my two chord is D minor seven, and my five chord is G seven, and that brings me back to one. And we can hear songs that are written like just off this, like for example. Right? 
Like that entire song is this chord progression basically. So not only can we just use this straight up, but one of the things that's so interesting about this 251 is it's so functional. This chord perfectly leads into this chord, perfectly leads into this chord. And so we, you know, we can dress it up and we could put all the trimmings on it, right? Like make it, mm. Mm. We can make it sound a little prettier. Like it's just one of those chord progressions. One of the beautiful things about it is we don't have to just use it in the key of C major. We can actually use the two five as a detour that brings us out of the key and then comes back in. So for example, let's say I wanna get to this D minor. Okay, and I wanna get here in an interesting way. What I can do is I can do a two five into this D minor. I can consider this D my one chord just for the moment and then I'll find my two, the five, and then the one. So if I were to put this in context with this progression, so let's say Sunday morning rain is falling. Still some color share some skin. We can stick that in and it gives us some motion that kind of brings us back and we almost feel like we land on this two for a second and then we come back to the five and then we come back to the one. So it's like sticking this two, five, one in as a harmonic detour that brings us back. So that's actually an instance where we can use it. I wasn't even planning to speak about it like that. Let's take a look at a really popular song that uses this. Between the Sheets by the Isley Brothers and made even more famous by Biggie Smalls. <laughs> Player. Sounds really nice, right? Did you catch where the 2-5 was? It's right there. So we have this 2-5 that's bringing us back to F. Now, why exactly is that a 2-5 and, and why did they put it there and where is that coming from? And what, What's the why? What's the science behind why that works? Well, check this out. This is in the key of A minor. We can just feel that, right? When we get to this chord, it feels like we've landed, like A minor just feels like home. So this is in the key of A minor, so F is not the one chord, but it is the start of the loop. So I can treat this real quickly like a one chord because this is where I'm gonna wanna come back to. So this is my target chord. This F major is where I'm going. So if I know I'm gonna land back here, I wanna find a cool way to get into this chord. And because that 251 has just like really great voice leading built into it, that's why it's so cool when we use it as an inside 25. So if this is my F and I just wanna treat this as one real quick, I'll find my two, G minor seven, find my five of F, which is that C7, and it brings me perfectly and beautifully into this F chord, G minor, C7, F. So when I stick that in the middle of the progression, it sounds incredibly beautiful inside 2-5. Now let's take a look at another example by Music Soul Child. catch where the 2-5 was? You can kind of hear it when it leaves the key real quick. You see how it almost feels like we land on that A? And that's because there's a 2-5 that brings us beautifully into that A. We can just hear this. And again, I can add those accidentals on it so it feels like there's a stronger pull. It just brings us beautifully into there. So this is actually a perfect example of an inside 2-5 because this is in the key of E major. And so if I'm in the key of E major, my starting chord is C sharp. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm starting here on the sixth chord. I have this movement here. And then I finally end up here, which is the four chord. One, two, three, four. A is my fourth. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing a two, five to the four, okay? Is that, you see how that makes sense? We're doing a two and a five to the four chord. 
And that's a really common place to put a two, five, one. It's just going to the four, landing on that four. So let's say I'm in the key of D major and I wanna do a two, five, that's gonna bring me into a four chord. Well, first of all, I want to define what my target is. Again, because the two five is gonna bring me there. So I wanna know where I'm going before I get in the car to go there. So if I'm in D major, one, two, three, four, my four chord is G, G major seven, because that's gonna make things a little bit more interesting. Now, thinking about G as my one, just for a moment, I'm gonna find my two chord, A minor, my five chord, D7, and then G. So we have A minor seven, D7, G. So if I put a D here in front of this, to establish that this is what key we're in. As soon as I play this A minor seven, what we're gonna hear is this two five just kind of bring us harmonically until we get to the G. And when we get to the G, we feel like we land because of this two five that kind of brought us over. Now check this out, feel it. You see how it feels like I landed here? I'm gonna do it one more time and then I'll keep going. If I do a 2-5, maybe into the 2 chord, right? And then 2-5-1 back home. You see how as soon as I get to this D, it feels like I landed. So I want to recap what I just did there. We have D major. I'm going to do a 2-5 into the 4, heading to the 4 chord. Right? Now I'm gonna head over to the two chord, which is E minor. Two, five, now I'm at E minor. And now I wanna head back home to my D major, so I'm gonna do a two five in D major. Two. <laughs> you see when I delay it just a little, you're like, come on, come on, come on, dude. Like you're waiting for this because the two five just has that motion built into it. Again, increasing levels of complexity here. So if you're not necessarily ready for that, if some of that went whoop, that's totally okay. You can still do your best to try to cop some of these voicings and cop some of these moves even before you fully understand them. There you have it. Those are the five ways to make any chord progression more jazzy. Number one, just simply add colors. Number two, you can add some passing chords in. Number three, you can use modal harmony. Number four, have that chromatic bass motion. And number five, using the inside two five. If you dig this content, like and subscribe to the channel so you can get more like this. It helps me out way more than you know. And it also helps yourself because if you're digging this and you want more educational content just like this, subscribe so that you can be notified when videos like this drop for you. My name is Bruce Beats. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.